God the praise. This Thanksgiving, I have a question for you. Are you giving God the praise? The question that I pose to you today is this. Do you believe glory is due? praise. I would tell you that God is certainly earned and he is worthy of my praise. This year, especially, I still think about that Saturday, May 8th, Mm -hmm. when I received the call to immediately get down to the hospital so that I could receive my new kidney. I think about that night and I think about just before I went on to the operation room, I think about the sheer amount of happiness I think about the sheer amount of joy Mm -hmm. that filled me, that consumed my heart. In other words, it consumed my spirit. It consumed my spirit to the point that I, a man who likes to talk, (laughs) I like to hear my voice every now and then. I was left speechless. Have you ever being left speechless by something that God has done for you. I believe many genuine believers know that feeling, Mm -hmm. that feeling of inexpressible joy. I believe everybody who believe knows exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to the good. Those who are not of faith, they do not get to experience this wonderful feeling of spiritual joy. We saw that they do not get to experience this wonderful feeling that is brought on by God's blessing of contentment. Because of this, they do not know, nor do they understand why we constantly give God the glory, the honor, Mm -hmm. and the praise. They do not understand why we take time to continue to thank the Lord for all that he has done for us. So the unfulfilled and the unsatisfied in their soul, they struggle with giving God the praise. Now, I believe that all of us as genuine believers, I believe that we must share our reasoning with them. the year. And if they are not going to stop to give God thanks, they're not going to stop and give God any praise. I'm preaching from the 29th Psalm today with a thought of giving God the praise. Now, we will see here in my key verse for today, which is the second verse. The glory that is due his name. That is what we see David say there. Yet I tell you again today, 
that those of no faith, they will not give the glory and the honor that is due to the Lord because they do not know his name. Again, I'm preaching from the 29th Psalm. The key verse is the second verse. Mm -hmm. They will not praise the name of God because they do not know the name of God. Now, someone might say that most people have heard of the Lord. Someone might say, well, everybody has heard of God. They know of him. Everybody knows of God. That is what someone might say, which I certainly believe is true. But I will tell you there lies the problem. They know of God. They know of him through word of mouth, Mm -hmm. what they have heard someone say. Lots of people have heard about God and the things that he has done. For example, I believe that a lot of people have heard about how God delivered the children of Israel out of the bondage of Egypt. I believe that a lot of people have heard about the Mosaic law. Mm -hmm. I believe a lot of people have heard about the 10 commandments as well. I also believe that a lot of people have heard about David and Goliath and how David defeated Goliath in the name of God. I believe that a lot of people have heard about that. Mm -hmm. Lastly, I believe that a lot of people have actually heard about Jesus Christ. They know of his birth. Mm -hmm. They know of his death. They know of his resurrection. Mm -hmm. And at the same time that they know that he is supposed to come again. They know of the second coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, while having heard of these things, Mm -hmm. those that do not truly know his name will often consider these things to be myths. They will consider these things to be fables. They will consider these things to be legends. Mm -hmm. So they choose not to take time to get to know him for themselves. They know of him from word of mouth, but again, there lies the problem. Mm -hmm. They will not take time to get to know God for themselves. To explain that just a bit further, let me use you for an example. Someone may know of you. Mm -hmm. They may have heard about you. But unless they take time to get to know you for themselves, then what do they really know about you? They don't know who you truly are. They don't know your name. They have heard of your name, but they do not know your name. The same holds true when it comes to God. Many people have heard me preach of God. Many people have heard me teach of God. They've read the Sunday school lessons. They've read the Bible studies. They've read the sermons as well. But if they don't stop to take time to get to know them for themselves, Mm -hmm. what do they really know about God? In order for someone to give glory and honor to the name of the Lord, they must first truly know who God is for themselves. This means that those who do not glorify or honor the Lord today, they must be willing to truly give God a try in their hearts. They must be willing to give God a try in their heart. They must be willing to stick by to stick with God and not immediately give up on him as a lot of people seem to do nowadays. You see, we learn to know God through our own personal experiences with him, Mm -hmm. through our own personal relationship, through our own personal fellowship with him. You see, we get to know who God is and what he is all about Mm -hmm. 
when we spend time with him for ourselves. So I would encourage anybody to get to know the Lord for themselves and not just take my words for it. All right. All right. David, through his own experiences with the Lord, he learned to depend on God. Mm -hmm. In the ninth Psalm, the ninth and the 10th verse, we will see that David learned that the Lord was his refuge. All right. All right. He learned that God, in other words, was his shield and his protection. Amen. David, he learned that God would never forsake him. He learned these things for himself. Yeah, yeah. by taking time to get to know the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then because he learned these things for himself, he felt moved in his spirit to share this information with someone else, mm -hmm. with all of us. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. All right. Now I believe today that many believers can echo this same thought of David. The reason why I believe this is because a lot of us have taken time to get to know the Lord for ourselves. You see, I would tell you today that God is my refuge, yeah, yeah. not because of David's words, but because of what I have learned in my relationship with God. I always know that God is there for me and I always go to him. He shields me. He protects me as well. I have learned through my own personal experience that God will never leave me, that God will never forsake me. And again, I tell you today, I believe that there are several other believers that can echo this same thought as David and this same thought as I have shared as well, because we have all learned through our own personal experiences, these things about our maker, our creator, our savior, the Lord God almighty. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. We who genuinely give God the praise, we do so because we sought the Lord mm -hmm. and we entered into fellowship with him and through our own experience, we saw the benefits of giving God the glory, mm -hmm. the honor, and the praise. Mm -hmm. Through our own experiences, we learned that God is certainly, truly worthy of all of our praise. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. There is a psalm that, that I often use for my call to worship scripture that I would like to reference here. Mm -hmm. in my sermon today. Right. That psalm is the 95th psalm. Mm -hmm. And I often reference that second and that third verse there, if you've turned to the 95th psalm. All right. All right. You see that David has some words of encouragement here. And you'll see that David says to us, he says, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Yeah. The his there being the Lord. Mm -hmm. So he says, let us come before the Lord with thanksgiving is what David is saying to us there. Mm -hmm. Well, then see David say there, let us shout joyfully. To him, the him being God again, mm -hmm. David says, let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. Yeah, yeah. He says, for the Lord is the great God and the great king above all gods. Right. Is what David says there in the 95th Psalm. Now, let us pay close attention to those two verses there. Let us pay attention to David saying to shout joyfully. Yeah. David says there, he says, shout joyfully to the Lord is what David says. Mm -hmm. Now we should know that to shout joyfully to God there is a means of giving God the glory, giving God the honor, 
giving God the praise. So David in that psalm was encouraging all of us to praise the name of God, to give God the glory that is due his name is what David was encouraging there. Now, someone may ask the question, why should we shout joyfully to the Lord? Someone may ask the question, why should I give God the praise? He hasn't done anything for me. That's what a lot of people think. That is what a lot of people believe. Because just as I said here, there are many people who live in our world. We are outnumbered by a majority that don't stop for just one day of the year to give God thanks or to praise his name for all that they, all that he has done for them. They don't believe that God has done anything for them. So they won't stop for a second to give God any glory, honor, thanks, or praise. So someone will ask the question, why should I shout joyfully to the Lord? Why are you encouraging this out of me? We give God the praise by shouting joyfully to him for quite a few reasons for quite a few benefits as well that I want to share with all of you today that I hope will encourage people to stop for one second and give God the glory that is due his name. We first give God the praise because it is a sign of our humility. In our humility and in our praising of God, we are outwardly acknowledging in recognizing the Lord, our God. Our praise of the Lord shows our dependence Mm -hmm. on him. We aren't relying on anybody else, no other gods, right? We are dependent on the Lord to care for us, to provide for us, Mm -hmm. to make a way for us, as I just prayed earlier today, as we go along the way on our journey. When we praise God outwardly, we are telling the world that we depend on him. We don't depend on man. We don't depend on woman. We depend on him. We are telling the world that God has made us happy in our soul. Mm -hmm. Now we'll find in scripture that our humility and our praise is what draws us closer to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it is a benefit. I tell you today to be close to God. Speaking of our praise, bringing us near to the Lord. We'll see in the 22nd Psalm and the third verse that David writes you speaking of God, he says, you are holy enthroned in the praises of Israel is what David said there. So in this 22nd Psalm and the third verse, David was speaking of God. And he says that God is enthroned in praises. He said of Israel, but Israel is not the only one that praises the Lord today. So David is saying that God is enthroned in our praises as well. Now to be enthroned means to be seated on a throne. So if you look at it from that viewpoint, What David is saying here in this psalm is that God is seated in our praises. God is in our praises. Mm -hmm. He abides in our praises. He dwells in our praises. Mm -hmm. So where our praises 
brings us close to God, what I want you to see there in that 22nd Psalm there mm -hmm. is that our praises brings God to us as well. All right. So there is a merging that comes together in our praises. Mm -hmm. Here we are, here God is, and we come together when we begin to praise the name of God. Do you see that there today? Oh, yes, sir. Now, this thought is further confirmed in scripture by Jesus. Mm -hmm. And you will see it in the gospel of Matthew in the 18th chapter of Matthew's gospel and the 22nd verse. Mm -hmm. Jesus said there, he says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, mm -hmm. Jesus said, I am there in the midst of them. What do you suppose those two or three are doing when they are gathered together in the name of Jesus? Yeah. They are praising his name. Mm -hmm. They are worshiping him. Yeah. Yeah. So Jesus confirms to us there that 22nd Psalm. He confirms to us that God is in the midst of our praises. Right. So the benefit of those that praise the Lord and are in fellowship with him is that God comes near to us. Mm -hmm. And when God comes near to us, we obtain things from the Lord. Yeah. We obtain his mercy. Mm -hmm. Not only do we obtain his mercy, but we find grace as well in the Lord. In Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews said that we obtain mercy mm -hmm. and that we find grace to help us in times of our need when God has drawn himself near to us and when we have come near to him and are in fellowship with him. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I tell you from my own personal experience with my relationship with God, through my praise, I tell you that God is close. God is near to me and he has never left my side. He has not forsaken me. Someone will ask, how do I know that God is near to me? Well, I know that God is near to me through the strength that I have to be able to make it through every trial and every tribulation that I have gone through in my life. Amen. I know that God is near to me because of the courage that I have mm -hmm. to face all infirmities and all afflictions all right. that has come along the way. Mm -hmm. This strength and this courage is not flowing through me physically. Mm -hmm. It flows through my spirit. And that is how I have made it. Mm -hmm. Someone asked, how did you go through those five years? Mm -hmm. You don't look like you went through anything. I made it because God brought me through. Yes, it was his strength that brought me through. Mm -hmm. It was his courage that brought me through. It was his love that brought me through. It was his power that brought me through. I don't know if you've ever made it through anything. And it was God's love that brought you through. Right. I don't know if you've ever been through anything and it was God's power. It was his strength that brought you through. I don't know if you've ever gone through anything where you felt that courage coursing through your soul and that courage allowed you to face your afflictions, mm -hmm. your infirmities, your struggles, your troubles. It allowed you to face those things head on and those things that did not defeat you, but you pummeled those things over. Right. Through the strength of God. Right. I would not have made it through those things without the Lord being near to me. I believe that all of us can testify that the Lord has helped us in our times of need. We can all testify that God has been there when we felt all alone. What a wonderful blessing that is when we sing our praises to the Lord and the Lord draws even closer to us. Now there's another benefit to giving God the praise that is due his name. 
And in recent weeks, you know that I have been focusing in on the devil. I've been focusing in on Satan and I've been focusing in on how he goes about hounding us as we go along the way, as he wages war against the Lord. Now, I want you to know today that your praises of God, I want you to know that they can do something when it comes to that old devil and how he continues to hound you as you go as he continues to try to attack you in his letter in the fourth chapter of James and the seventh verse, we will see that James wrote that when we submit ourselves to the Lord, James said that we resist the devil. James said that when we submit ourselves to the Lord, He said that Satan will flee from us. Submission. Now, submission to God again is a sign of our humility. Humility again is what leads the genuine believer to give God the glory, the honor and the praise. So when we humbly submit ourselves before the Lord, when we give him the glory, the devil will see this. The devil will see you submitting yourself to the Lord, praising his name. And when he looks upon you, that old devil is going to flee. That old devil is going to depart from you. Now I used to hear this when I was a kid. The old folks, they used to always say that when we start shouting the name of Jesus, the devil wouldn't know what to do. The enemy, the enemy won't know what to do. When we start praising the name of Jesus. I don't know if y'all remember hearing that when you was little or growing up. So when we humbly submit ourselves to the Lord, The saying is that the devil will flee from us. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to know today that those old folks you heard saying that they were not making that up. They were speaking from their own personal experiences. Mm -hmm. They had to fight a whole bunch of demons and devils in their day. Mm -hmm. And when they began to shout the name of Jesus, The old enemy, those devils, those demons, they did not know what to do. Those old folks, they made it. They withstood the devil. How often have you called on the name of Jesus and saw whatever was ailing you be defeated? How often have you called on the name of Jesus and saw your enemies fall by the wayside as you continue to go on, as you continue to carry on where they saw, where they thought you would be defeated. You had the victory the whole time. It was every single time for me. Every time I've praised the name of God, I've gotten the victory. What was ailing me what was causing me troubles. All of a sudden it was gone. Yes, yes. Again, in scripture, this very thought is confirmed to us mm-hmm. in the 20th chapter of second Chronicles in the 20th through the 24th verse. Be sure to write that down. Mm-hmm. There is an event that is recorded there in that scripture where the Jews were completely surrounded by their enemies. Right. At that time, the good King Jehoshaphat encouraged the Jews to come together and to sing praises to the Lord. Mm -hmm. When they began to sing praises to God, scripture shows us that the Lord, he began to move immediately on behalf of the Jews. The enemies that surrounded the Jews, we are told that they were defeated Mm -hmm. and that none of the enemies escaped the Lord is what we're told there in that scripture. I've also been referencing the fourth chapter of Matthew's gospel a lot recently as well. Mm -hmm. Talking about how the devil tempted Jesus. Now, as I've been referencing that passage of scripture quite a bit, I've never quite gotten through it all the way. Mm -hmm. 
until today, where we'll look at how that temptation came to an end. At the end of the temptation, after all the words that the devil had to say to Jesus, we'll see there in the fourth chapter of Matthew's gospel in the 10th and the 11th verse that Jesus had something to say to Satan. We'll see there in those two verses that Jesus, he testified of the word of God, Mm -hmm. that Jesus, he gave God the glory. And he said to Satan, away with you. (laughs) Jesus said, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Again, I want you to know there that Jesus, he testified of the word of God and that Jesus gave his father the glory. When he said that you shall worship the Lord, your God and him only you shall serve. Praising the name of God. Now, do you know how Satan responded to that word from Jesus? Do you know how Satan responded when Jesus gave God the glory? When he praised the name of God, the devil who had so much to say to Jesus in his wit, in his cunningness, Satan, he left. No words said. Satan left. Satan departed is what that scripture tells us. Satan was again defeated. He defeated and he went away with his tails between his legs. Satan, he departed at the praise of the Lord. You see, when we give God the praise, our enemies will do just the same. Our enemies will be defeated in that moment. And that old devil, he will depart and he will flee from us. Again, I don't know about you, but I've seen many fall. I've seen many trials go by the way. I've seen many tribulations stop being tribulations for me. As soon as I called on the name of God, as soon as I gave him the praise, I've seen him go away. And God left me with something that was wonderful, a blessing when the enemy thought that he was going to defeat me. What a wonderful blessing it is to be able to give God the glory that is due to his name and our enemies, all of our troubles, our struggles, they go away. What I believe becomes abundantly clear to us on this day is that the Lord loves to hear it when we praise his name. I believe that God loves to hear it when the true and genuine believer gives him the praise. You see, we praise the Lord today because when we give him the praise, the Lord will hear our praise and he will move in that moment on our behalf. That is a wonderful benefit to our praise. I want to share with you one more psalm to show you confirmation of this thought through David's life experience again. In the 66th Psalm and the 17th verse, David, he wrote, I cried to him, the him being God again. He said, I cried to him with my mouth. David said, and he was extolled on or with my tongue. Mm -hmm. Now to extol there, it means to praise highly. So David, he is saying there that he praised the Lord highly with his tongue. David is likely saying there that he sang, that he shouted Mm -hmm. praises to the Lord, our God. Mm -hmm. We see there in the 18th verse that David, he continued there. He said, certainly God has heard me. So David said, certainly God heard my praise. Mm -hmm. 
David said that he, God has attended to the voice of my prayer is what he said there because of his praise. God attended to him because of our praise. God attends to us because he's close to us. David then said, blessed be God who has not turned away my prayer nor his mercy from me. Mm-hmm. It's what David said there. So David explains that the Lord attended to him at the voice of his prayer, and at the voice of his praise. All right. Yeah, I believe that this is an experience that all genuine believers mm-hmm. have experienced and can testify to as well. God, we all know, moves at the behest Mm -hmm. of our praise. Mm -hmm. God, we all know, moves at the behest of the sound of our voice. As soon as we begin to speak to him, as soon as we begin to cry out to him, Mm -hmm. as soon as we begin to give him the glory, the honor and the praise, God, he begins to move. He begins to work for us and he does not wait around to do so. We know that when God moves on our behalf, when he moves at the behest of our voice, We know that he makes us full in our soul, that our joy becomes full. And again, we are left speechless with an inexpressible joy where many will mock the idea of singing praises to the Lord. I must ask today, What bad can come from giving God the praise that is due his name? What bad can come from giving God the glory, from giving God the honor, from giving God the praise that is due his name? What bad can happen when we cry out to God? From my own personal experiences, So far from what I have experienced in my life, scripture has been confirmed. Haven't experienced any bad. Mm -hmm. Somebody going to say, oh, preacher, you just you just lost your kidney. You had that going on for five years. That's bad. But here I stand today. What are you talking about? Right. Struggle is part of life. Come on. Afflictions are part of life. Yeah. All of us have our problems. Mm-hmm. All of us have our infirmities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God will not allow us to be defeated. Right. God will not allow us to be destroyed. Mm-hmm. What bad can come from giving God the glory, the honor, and the praise that is due his name when he has given me the victory? Right. When he has given you the victory? God, he continues to order my steps. God, he continues to keep me in his care. God, I tell you today, he continues to supply my every need. There is no bad that has come from my praising of the Lord. I truly hope that you can now understand why we feel it is so important for us to sing our praises to the Lord, because just as God has continued to bless me, he has done the same for others as well. My hope is that you can understand why the genuine believer will humble themselves and praise the Lord. You see, there is power in giving God the praise. I encourage you this Thanksgiving to stop and recognize how good God has been to you Mm -hmm. and then give him the glory that is due his name. Mm -hmm. I believe that we ought to sing our praises to the Lord from our waking up to our lying down at night. Why? Because again, he has ordered not just my steps, but he's ordered all of your steps. He's ordered all of our steps. Why? Because God has kept all of us in 
his care. Why? Because God has supplied all of our needs in due time. Not only has the Lord done all of these things for us, but through him, we have spiritual salvation. We have an even greater victory, which we ought to praise the Lord for, which we ought to give God thanks for as well. Peter, in his first letter, he wrote, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten uh, us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now listen to these words closely, what Peter said. Peter, he said, greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perish Mm -hmm. though it is tested by fire Mm -hmm. may be found to praise to honor and to glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ whom having not seen you love Mm -hmm. though now you do not see him yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory Receiving the end of your faith, Mm -hmm. the salvation of your souls is what Peter said there. God has given to us his care. God has given to us his providence. And most importantly, God has given to us his deliverance, his salvation. So again, I ask the question today, why not give God the praise? Again, I must ask you that question. If you are not praising the Lord today, why not give him the glory and the honor that is due his name? Because the Lord is certainly worthy of it. I believe that God has earned it. And I believe that you should give it. Let us put aside our foolish pride. Let us put aside our foolish arrogance. Let us humble ourselves this Thanksgiving. Let us sing the wonderful praises of the Lord because as always, God is worthy of all of our praise. Amen. 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 Amen.